Hello, it's Mrs. McCullough. We are in our third mini lesson for this series that readers track characters. And that's what we've been working on, how readers track characters. We've been noting all of the details of just one facet all the way across the whole entire text. And we've been doing that by looking specifically at three types of details. We've been looking at the do details, everything that the character will do, actions, their decisions, how they react to things. We've been looking at all the say details with the speech bubble here. That's the dialogue or the conversations that they might have. We've been doing all of the think details. Their, when they talk to themselves or their wishes or their wants, their wonderings and a lot about their feelings. And so we were collecting all of those different do, say, and think details with our character tracking device. We were looking at the beginning and the middle and the end, tracking it all the way through, really paying attention to what does a character do, what does a character say, and what does a character think. Now, why? Would anybody go through all of this time jotting down all of these character details? Well, that's what I'm going to tell you about today. You see, we do this when we want to pay close attention to character traits. Character traits? What's that? Well, that's a big grown up word. That's a big scholarly word for paying really close attention to the character's personality. You know, like how he is on the inside. Now, let me tell you what a character trait is not. It's not a feeling. A lot of people get confused by that. They think that when I say trait, we're talking about how a character feels. And remember that Humpty Dumpty, he did have feelings. He was very nervous. He was afraid of heights. He was too scared to climb up on the top bunk. He had feelings, but that's not his character trait. Or like in a bad case of stripes. Remember, she was embarrassed when everybody laughed at her. That's a feeling, but that's not a character trait. Let me show you the difference between those two. I have this up that I like to use with students and see how feelings are fleeting. That means they're here one minute and gone the next. And that's how we find a lot of characters are. They might be happy, then sad, then angry, then embarrassed. They're all kinds of things. So feelings exist in our characters, but what we're really looking for is a trait. And a trait is tried and true. It's something that we see going on at the beginning of the story and the middle of the story and the end of the story. And here's the other thing. The author doesn't come right out and tell us about the character traits. No, you won't find it anywhere in the text. It won't say his character trait is blank. It won't say that. You know what the, what the author does? The author leaves you all kinds of details to help you figure it out. And so that's why, that's why we had to collect all of these details because we had to pay attention to what does the character do? What does that tell me about his personality and his trait? What does the character say? What does that tell me about his personality or character trait? What does the character think? What does that tell me about his personality and his trait? Okay. And, and we already noted some of the feelings. We know that they had feelings. We wrote those down for what the character thinks. So now what we're going to do is start to pull out those details, combine them together, and have a thought. Does that sound familiar? Doesn't that sound familiar? Doesn't that sound like what we've been doing all along with our inference silhouette? Yeah, with our inference silhouette, we've been collecting details. Guess what? It's all of these kinds of details. All of the things that the character will think. All of the things the character will say. All of the things that the character will do. 
Those are the kinds of details that we collect around the inference silhouette. And then we start to look for patterns and relationships and things that go together. And that's how we determine what a trait is. Okay, so now, before we do that, let's just look a little bit closely at some of these traits. What do you mean? What's a character trait? What's a personality? Let's just kind of look at the list here. You see this first list is all about things that are maybe some good character traits, like somebody who's energetic. They have a lot of energy. They're playful. They're creative, pretty friendly or curious. Somebody who's funny or generous. They like to give things. See, that's not a feeling. That is their personality. Or let's look at the next column. They're powerful. They're bold. They're brave. They're independent. They can do it all by themselves. But they're loyal. They care about people. They're intelligent, really smart. They're hardworking. They get the job done. Okay, so let's look at the other column here. They could be content. They're just happy with what they've got. They're very thoughtful to others. They're respectful. They take care of things. They're studious. They like to study and, and learn new things. They're very honest. They'll always tell the truth. And they're thankful for the things that they have. There are, there's a different column over here where maybe they're bashful. They don't want a lot of attention. Or they're gullible. They'll believe anything you tell them. They could be lazy and not want to do any work or they could be helpless. They just don't know what to do to try to help themselves. This last column here says they could be demanding. They always want it their way, or they're rude. They just say mean and hateful things. Maybe they're selfish. They want all of it for themselves. Maybe they're mischievous. Maybe they do things they know they're not supposed to do, but they just, they want to do it anyway. Not bad, bad things, but just simple things. Maybe they're impatient. They don't like to wait on anybody or anything. They want to hurry, hurry, hurry. Okay. So do you see what I mean about these are personalities? These are character traits. It's more about what they're like on the inside. So I thought maybe we could look at an example of some characters and the traits that they possess. So when I'm thinking about the character trait of irresponsible, you know what that takes me back to? That takes me right back to our story of the three pigs. And that first little pig, he was very irresponsible because remember, he was lazy and he just wanted to make his house really fast with the straw. So he is a, an example of irresponsible. Or maybe when you think of someone who's bold, you think of Junie B. Jones, right? She's very bold and she's energetic. That's a synonym. That's another word that means the same thing as bold. She's energetic. She's always on the move, getting things done. That's what I think of when I think of Junie B. Jones. Or maybe if you think of a character who's sensible, who's a rule follower, then maybe that reminds you of Jack from the Magic Treehouse books, right? Remember how he's usually pretty sensible. He's making wise choices. He thinks things through. Yeah. Or if we think of a character who maybe is a little selfish, maybe it's the character from the Lorax. Now, not the Lorax himself, but the Wansler. You think it's him? Yeah, he's pretty selfish and greedy. I agree with that. So when I'm tracking character traits, I'm always thinking about that really important vocabulary word for personality. And then I'm thinking of the synonym. What's, what's another word that I know that would be a little easier for me to understand what this important vocabulary word is for a character trait? And then I always like to list my examples because that helps me remember maybe there are other characters I'm going to come across who are irresponsible or bold or sensible or selfish. And I start to compare them to the first little pig or Junie B. Jones or Jack or the Onesler. Okay, so now 
that you have a better understanding of just what a character trait is. What I want to do now is show you how we figure it out. You see, there's a secret to how we figure these things out. And so when we are focused on this, we've got to go through the process of collecting all that the characters will do, say, or think. And we did that. We collected them. But then we have to start to put them with the inference silhouette. And now we need to start to look for patterns. And so in a, a bad case of stripes, I collected all of the details. What did she do? What did she say? What did she think? And I put it on a character tracking device. Then I came over here to my inference silhouette and I added all of those green reading voice details. Okay, these are the details that the author actually put in the text to help me figure this out. But now what I have to do is I have to start to look for patterns. I have to start to look for things that really go together, okay? So as I'm looking for patterns and relationships, I'm starting to see some things here about Camilla. You see, it was the first day of school and she was really fretting about the first day of school because she wanted to fit in with the other kids. That was something that she really was worried about. And when I start to look through all of those details that we were collecting, I see some other things that go with this. She's afraid of what kids would say. She was relieved when she didn't have to go to school after those stripes showed up. So all of those details, when I put them together, let me see. Um, now, as I'm starting to, to look at those, when I put those together, fretting about the first day, wanting to fit in, afraid of what kids would say, she really wants all of the kids to like her. That's what my thinking voice was saying to me. Now, nowhere in the book did it say that exactly, but I put those patterns together. And that's what I started to notice, okay? So then when I started to look for some other things, I thought through this and I thought, okay, well, she keeps changing. She keeps changing into what someone said, right? Or she screamed because she saw she had stripes in when she looked in the mirror. And so she kept changing. She turned into the American flag. She turned into a checkerboard. She took her medicine and she turned into a pill. There were all those things that were happening to her. She just kept changing over and over and over again. So I'm going to put these together here. And that's what my thinking voice is saying to me. So that's what I wrote down. She keeps changing into what others say. She's, she's not really being herself. She's being whatever someone else says. Then this whole time, we know that she loves lima beans. But guess what? She won't eat them. Remember that? She won't eat the lima beans. And several times that comes up. She really wanted lima beans, but she wouldn't eat them. And she was afraid to admit that she liked lima beans. She even lied about it to the old woman and said, yuck, no one likes lima beans, especially me. Now, guys, when I think about this, then I put these details together here outside the head. And I'm thinking, if somebody liked something that much, wouldn't they just go ahead and eat it? Wouldn't they just go ahead and do what makes them happy? And so why is she denying herself of something that she really wants? This is just making the problem worse and worse and worse. Okay, so now something happened though. Something happened. She cried out to the woman who came to help her and she finally told the truth. She said, truth is I love lima beans. And when she admitted that, then she was all cured. So finally, 
honesty. Finally, she was honest about what she wants. And that's what really helped her get better. That's what cured her of the bad case of stripes. So at the end of the book, she ate all the lima beans she wanted. She didn't care about what others thought. And now she cares about herself. So when I started to look at all of those, and maybe some of these post-it notes go in other places. Let's see, she was embarrassed because she wanted to, the kids to like her. Being laughed at was nothing compared to this. So she kept changing and the, well, the problem was getting worse, I think, okay? So when I start to look at this and I, I think about, well, what does it, what kind of personality is it when someone is really concerned and wants to be liked by other people? And what, what kind of personality is it that maybe changes some things about themselves to try to make sure that other people like them? They're, they're trying to fit in. They're trying to, uh, they care about what other people think. But what happened with her, honestly, was she did it a little too much, right? And so she, when she really denied herself of something she wanted, her problem just got worse and worse and worse. So she realized that even though she wanted people to like her, she had to be honest about what she wants. And now she not only cares about what other people feel about her, she also cares about herself. So she cares a lot. She cares deeply. And when I think about that, and I go back to that character trait list, and I start to think about this middle column. And so she's thoughtful. She's, she's thinking about other people liking her, but yet she also has learned she needs to like herself. But I also think maybe when I go down here to this word, considerate, she's considerate. She thinks about others before herself. Now, she did a little too much in this book, but she's pretty considerate. She's, she's thoughtful. She's considerate of others, and she's also considerate of herself now. So see, that's why we had to collect all those details, because we can't come up with any of these thoughts or the bigger inference that's the character trait without collecting all the say and do and think details first. Okay, so I want you to try this out, okay? We are gonna try this out with all of the details that we've been collecting. We were working on this text after the fall. And remember, we collected all those details about Humpty Dumpty. So let's review. He fell off the wall and he drew pictures of the birds. He slept on the floor because he was afraid of the top bunk. He loved being close to the birds. That was his favorite spot, being high up on the wall. But now he was afraid of heights and he couldn't go up there. So he was scared to enjoy the things that he likes and he just watched the birds from the ground. But he made a paper plane or bird and, and he did that because he missed the birds so much. But it was hard to even make that plane, but that Humpty Dumpty, he just kept trying. And when he finally made a perfect one, he was so happy. He was so happy to actually fly that plane or bird. But what happened? It got stuck on the wall, didn't it? And so he thought about all the time he'd spent working on that plane. And he thought about all that he had missed because he wanted to be at the top of the wall and he wanted to be with the birds and he just wasn't letting himself do it. And he thought about all that that he missed. So he climbed that wall. Even though he was nervous, even though he was terrified, he kept climbing. And when he got to the top, he was no longer afraid. And then what happened? He turned into a bird. Duh, how come we didn't figure that out when he was an egg? and then he learned to fly. So now what we have to do is we have to take those do, say, and think details and we have to start to combine them together and see if we can find some patterns, 
some uh, relationships, some things like that to see if we can figure this out. Okay, so now if we start to look at these details, then what we're trying to do is group things that go together. And if you remember when I was reading it, there were a lot about the birds. You remember that? He drew pictures of the birds. He loved being close to the birds. He watched the birds from the ground. He missed the birds, right? He was happy when he flew that bird kind of playing that he was doing. And so I think maybe we need to group some of these together. So I'm going to just move some stuff over so that we've got some room. Okay, so he loved being close to the birds. He missed them. He was happy. Okay, and so what does that mean? What are you noticing? How does he feel? What does he want? Yeah, he wants to be with the birds, doesn't he? That's what he longs for. He longs to be with the birds. Longs means that's what he wishes. That's what he desires. That's what he does. Even though he wanted that, though, he was very afraid. Can you find all of the details about where he was afraid? What was he doing? He was afraid of the top bunk. He was scared to enjoy the things that he likes. Let's see, what else? He was now afraid of heights. All of those things, right? And he let his fear really keep him from doing all of those things. So if we group that together, then maybe that's what our, in, our little uh, inference, mini inference should be right here. Maybe that's what our pattern and relationship should be right here. So he let his fear do what? Stop him. Yes, he let his fear stop him or keep him from doing what he wants. I agree. I agree. So even though he was afraid, then he, he started to do something else. If he couldn't go to the wall, what was he going to do? He was going to make a paper plane or bird. And honestly, that wasn't very easy. Remember how he said it was really hard, but he just kept trying. And so, you know, that's, that's something about his personality that even though he couldn't do what he wanted, he tries it a new way. Is that what you were thinking? Yeah, if he can't have what he wants, then he's going to try it in a new way. Okay, so now... Let's start to see. Do you see anything else that maybe needs to go together? He fell off the wall while that was in the beginning. His favorite spot was high up on the wall. Like he wants to be with the birds. He slept on the floor. Well, that's because he was so afraid. So maybe we ought to check some details over here. Okay. He thought about all the time he spent working on it. He thought all about what he had missed. Yeah, he's he's starting to he's starting to think back and he's starting to remember. He's remembering what made him happy. Let's see, climb the wall. Is that thinking about it? No, that's actually doing it. He's nervous, he's terrified. Oh, well, it didn't quite keep his keep him from doing it. He did it anyway. Okay. So maybe if we put some of those together, it's he's remembering. You think he's remembering how happy he used to be when he went up there. But now what does he do? What does he do at the end? His bird got stuck on the wall. And so then what did he do? He climbed up the wall. Even though he was nervous and terrified, what happened? He kept climbing. Yeah. And then when he did that, he was no longer afraid. And he, he turned into that bird and he learned to fly. So we can start to group some of those things together. And so 
He doesn't let the fear keep him down. What does he do instead? You tell me. He faces his fears. I like how you're thinking. He faces his fear and he does what he used to do when he was happy. So when I look back at all of these patterns and I really start to think about the personality. So what's a personality of someone who longs for something the way it used to be? They remember how happy they used to be. And maybe they can't have it anymore or he's not letting himself do it anymore because he's afraid. He tried it in a different way, but it just wasn't the same. He really, he, he wants it to be like it used to be. He's really very, he's really very tender. He's really very, he's kind of thoughtful. He's, he likes to remember. You know what? There's a word for that. There's a word. We're going to go to that column again. Is he content? No, because he wants what he used to have. Um, let's see. Is he respectful? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, there, there's nobody else really in the story. It's all about him. Is he serious? Maybe sometimes a little too serious, you think? What about sentimental? Do you know what that means? That means you liked to do things long ago. And so maybe that's how we could explain him. He's sentimental. He likes how it used to be, right? That's his personality. He likes how it used to be when he would be up on the wall with the birds. Okay, so guys, you've done a great job at really collecting all those details. What does the character say? What does the character do? What does the character think? You're doing a great job with that. And I want us to keep practicing that skill but I want us to push it just a little bit further, okay? So in order to practice this, what I have for you is a book on Epic and it's Frog and Toad are Friends. I know you've probably heard it before and I honestly hope you have, okay? But you can read it or you can have it read to you if you want, that's an option, okay? But what I want us to do is not the whole book. I want us to just do this chapter a lost button, okay? And I want us to only focus on one of the characters. I want us to only focus on Toad. Now, Toad is the little brown one here, okay? He's the one in the jacket with the buttons. He's the one that loses the button. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna track all that Toad will do say, or think, okay? So you'll need this piece. You're gonna track it all. What does he do? What does he say? What does he think? I think you can do this. I think you're ready for this. But then I'm giving you an inference silhouette and I want you to, to try to think about all of those details that you've collected on Toad and then I want you to try to put those details around the inference silhouette. And I want you to look for patterns. And I want you to check this list over here. And I want you to see if there are any traits, any personalities that, that you would make an inference about to describe Toad, the little brown one that loses the button, okay? That's what I would like for you to do. So you'll collect the details with the do, say, think. You'll, you'll put all those details together and see if you can come up with a big vocabulary word that would help you describe the character trait of Toad. That's the assignment if you were in Mrs. McCullough's class, but your teacher might have an even better idea.